Josh here for the Building Blocks Quotes Along, and today we're stitching circles in a nine patch block. Okay, Leah's gonna give me some direction today because she said she's had some trouble with this one. So let's try this big circle first. So okay. rotate your block however you want. And then just. Your gap, okay. just however you want to swing into it. You know, gotcha. you can do it clockwise or counterclockwise. Gotcha. One thing I noticed just with uh, stitching the ditch along here to kind of stabilize. The, the whole block is with all these circles combined with the straight lines it creates an optical illusion effect in the corners it makes you feel like it's curved it makes you feel like the straight lines are curved yes and then all it is is an optical illusion because the straight lines are straight it's one of those weird things with design you never know what you put together and it's going to end up looking like something else this is looking really good i like seeing that you have to stop and start um, I tried to quilt these kind of all in one pass and my circles ended up suffering a little bit for that. So I think that this is a really good idea. All right, so you stitched your big circle. And now let's try and tackle this little, little area. Okay. Uh, and think figure eights. You know, if you can kind of stitch down here, travel stitch down here, and maybe swing around this circle and then go into this one. Kind of try and keep it continuous. Yeah, need, a figure eight like that? Well, if you need to, yeah. However Let's you think, that. however you think it's going to work best. How are you feeling about these circles? I'm not a fan of circles, but this is actually not too bad. You just go slow. Don't be afraid of stopping. And let's test out this figure eight action here. Oh yeah, it's much easier. I definitely, yeah, I can, wow, what a difference. You like being able to swing around it like that? Yeah, it splits up the monotony of, of uh, working with circles. Yeah, look how, look how much better this circle is than the last one I did. And that one was a lot bigger, too. Also want to note, uh, I dropped my, my uh, stitch length, stitch speed to medium. Uh, this one, if you're not doing well with it, maybe you could drop it down to low. Yeah, so like your, this is a speed slider. For this particular machine, we have an ability to change the speed of the machine. Not all machines have this, and certainly older machines probably won't. But if you have the capability, this is something that Josh taught me, and that sometimes lowering the speed of the machine to medium or low is really helpful for beginners. The difference is night and day. Yeah, Easy. I keep my speed at full speed. I like to have the full range of speed on my foot pedal. I like to be able to access those higher speeds and those lower speeds. But it's the difference of experience and also control over the block and the speed uh, kind of controls the stitch length as well. So lowering it to medium is going to be probably something that helps you out a lot with this block. Okay, you got a plan for where you're going to go next? Yep. Some travel stitching. You really can't avoid the travel stitching with this block. But when I sat down and set this, gave this block to Josh, I kind of said, well, I want to see how you're going to stitch it without any guidance from me. I said, just stitch it in the ditch and let's just see how you do it. So it's really fascinating to see his choices. Uh, I stitch it very differently, but just understand there's no right or wrong answer here. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's whatever feels most comfortable. And Josh is rotating a lot, probably, just to yeah, find the comfortable... Yeah, and it's, this one I can't... I'm just guessing. This, okay. I think this will work, but That's we'll see. Because I'm calculating in the figure eight turn I'm going to do here. And I'm just going to rotate right when I get to the middle here. Yeah. I'm going to swing around. There we go. And stitch into there the second bottom circle. Yes, always. Very cool. And the, I've, this is the second time I've done this, and I find the uh, second the second half of the figure eight much easier to stitch. You can see it's a better quality circle too. Just remember to you know stop and rotate. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so taking a look at this, we basically have these you know, clusters of four circles and these large circles to fill basically just work through the entire block the same way and then I like to see Josh work this outer perimeter edge so just travel stitch here and then let's work that area and see how he does that the 
it's basically just kind of that half circle shape pop up and around and back to that line that might have already been stitched in the ditch depending on the order that you stitched your block that, I find that to be easier than the circles. Really? You like that half circle shape? It almost reminds me of doing the figure eight because you're working with half circles with that too. Yeah, you're working the bottom edge. So you like that curve, that U-shaped curve. Yeah, it's it's not an issue for me at all, if you can awesome. see. Awesome. Though, like I said earlier, it is, it's interesting because uh, when you get here doing the straight lines, you do get the optical illusion effect, which is... Weird. Kind of weird, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay, you should I keep going, doing? What, do you, what, what should say, I do here? I'd say swing around and do that do circle. circle. Let's just see how that corner okay. works. Now, I can I can tell you right now, this one's going to be wonky because it's in the corner and I don't have a lot of room and you re I really lose control in working in corners. Room to hang on to. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I'm going to start here. I'm going to start down here. I'm going to follow this and then go around here like that, finish up and travel stitch out. Awesome. That's great. And I'm going to rotate right here. You know, rotate. Okay. That looks great. Oh, 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 oh. thread <laughs> yeah. break. <laughs> felt, felt that instantly. Yeah. So basically, it was the machine saying, hey, don't like that. Please don't do that. And that's um, too bad. That's the direction that's the most comfortable for me. So I bring the needle up and re thread the machine. This is what. And, and let's just break here so that way we can kind of talk through this, what we do whenever the thread does this. Okay, so we broke thread here and we have just a little tuft of thread on the front and a little tuft of thread on the back, not very much of anything. And here's the deal, all of these stitches are super, super, super tiny and they're really hard to pick out. I've already sat here and tried to pick out some of these with just the tip of my seam ripper and this would be my typical thing to do. I would typically pick out the stitches very carefully, either with the tip of a seam ripper or with a straight pen, and just very carefully kind of tug on the top thread a little bit, and then pick out the bobbin thread. It's pretty meticulous, and I'll be honest, these stitches are so tiny, I can't do it. So what do you do if this happens to you? Well, what I'm going to do, and this is not how I like to do it, but I will do this in a pinch. I'm going to clip these thread tails very close. I know that the stitching is secure because I can barely pick it out myself. I'm just clipping off the excess thread right there. It's clipped off the back. And then now we're going to put it back on the machine and we're going to actually start stitching right here and kind of overlap this line of stitching so it is totally secure. Okay, so this is the black back on the machine and I'm dropping the foot and dropping the needle right down into the stitching on that side. We are going to overlap the stitching and just keep those thread tails to the back and chances are they won't you know, get sucked in the machine. They won't cause more of a problem and you're going to try and s travel stitch on top of that previous line of stitching so that way that's completely secure. Basically you're just going to reinforce it just in case it'll pop out. Yeah. But now, it won't. It's, at least with is, my stitching it's too tight. Now that isn't going to be as secure as if I had picked out the stitches and tied them in a knot. However, we did enough travel stitching in that area that I think it's going to be secure enough. So understand that certainly I have a, a preference when it comes to tying off and hiding threads. But when you get into a situation of a thread break and you have really tiny stitches and they're impossible to pick out, sometimes you just got to go with what works. And this, this is what worked in this situation. Uh, overlapping the stitching, kind of like travel stitching, uh, is going to secure this in place. It's also right on the edge of the block too. So whenever we go to put these blocks together and they're bound together, it's going to get covered up and secured even more. So it's not the end of the world if this happens to you. So how did you feel about this block, Josh? It's, it was actually easier than spirals. And that surprised me because uh, Leah built it up, said it's going to be uh, problematic. And well, I, I had too trouble bad. with it. <laughs> I had trouble I mean, with it's it. Not, obviously, it's not perfect, but I'm happy with it. So. Yeah. So it's fun. Take that and, and run with it. Circles are fun. Just don't make them something that is really obsessive. You know, they're a pretty shape. Uh, they're certainly something to practice more than anything else. So my name is Leah Day, and I'm here with my husband, Josh, and this has been a video for the Building Blocks Quilt Along. 
Pick up your copy of the Building Blocks quilt pattern at leahday.com or pick up a cheater cloth spoonflower panel at spoonflower.com and join us as we learn how to piece and free motion quilt together. Pick up your quilt pattern at leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.